Any of the DX code locations from 2 to 56 can be set to learn a radio code. User locations must be enabled as a radio code from installer programming mode. Radio keys can be learned, deleted or replaced easily in both user and installer programming mode, but only if the code has been enabled as a radio code by the installer. To enable a radio code user, enter the user location from P202E to P254E. Enter the user code's extra options by pressing the Exclude E button on an LCD keypad or the Extra Options button on a Navigator keypad. Enable the extra option 5E to enable the code as a radio code. Also ensure that 1E or 2E are also enabled to arm and disarm an area. Close the extra options by pressing Exclude E again or on the navigator, press the top button in the right hand corner. On a navigator keypad, a wireless key icon is displayed for radio codes. On LCD keypads, nothing is displayed. To check a radio code for an LCD keypad, simply toggle the extra options and check that 5E is enabled. If you have just closed the extra options, you will be returned to the user location screen and you will be ready to learn a radio key. Otherwise, you will need to enter the user location number. To learn a radio key into the user location, on an LCD keypad, press 1E. On a navigator keypad, press the radio code button. The ready icon will now display and the system is ready to accept the radio code. If an error beep occurs, it means a radio key is already programmed in the location. You will need to delete this radio key before learning a new one. To learn the radio key into the system, for four button radio keys, press the off button. For single button pendants, press and hold the button for two seconds. If the radio key is learned successfully, the keypad will beep three times. The radio keys will now operate with the following functions automatically without further programming. Radio keys can be deleted or replaced in both user and installer programming mode, allowing end users to easily remove or replace lost radio keys by themselves. Installers can make this easier for the customer by detailing the locations of codes and keys in the installation record found in the back of the user manual. To delete or replace a radio key, enter the user location P202E to P256E. On an LCD keypad, press 0E. On the navigator keypad, press the delete code button. A new radio key can now be learned into the user location. Strobe flashes are automatic when arming and disarming the system in away mode from radio keys. It is possible to also enable flashes for home arming from radio keys. Enable the option P64E 6E to enable strobe flashes on home arming by radio key. Siren chirps are supported by horn speakers on the siren output only. Chirps are not available for combination 12 volt sirens on the reset output. To enable siren chirps, activate option P64E 4E. The system will now chirp once when arming and three times when disarming from a radio key only. Activating option P68E 8E will reduce the siren chirp volume by about half. Optionally, a new option in the latest version D8 panels allows siren chirp volume to be set specifically. Enter option P162E then enter the chirp volume between 1 and 99, with 1 being the lowest and 99 being the highest. Radio keys will arm in away mode by default, but can also be programmed to arm in home mode by either double pressing the on or off buttons or pressing the auxiliary button depending on the programming preference. Enable option P69E 5E to allow arming in home mode by pressing the on or the off buttons twice within 4 seconds. This feature will only function if zones have been programmed for home mode arming first. The radio key auxiliary button can also be programmed as a dedicated home mode arming button. Activate option P120E 3E and this will now allow the blue button to arm the system in home mode. It is also possible to enable siren chirps and strobe flashes for home mode arming. 
Option P120E2E will cause the siren to chirp when arming the system in home mode from a radio key. Option P64E6E will cause the strobe to flash on home arming by radio key. The red panic button will trigger an audible panic alarm when pressed for two seconds. It is possible to set which outputs are triggered from the panic alarm, but this also affects panic triggered from the system keypad. Enter option P61E and then enable or disable the outputs 5E through to 8E. For example, to change the panic alarm to a silent duress alarm, enter option P61E and then disable all options 5E through to 8E. Both the blue auxiliary button and red panic buttons can be programmed to operate auxiliary outputs on the panel to operate gates and doors. Note that the optional 106013 relay board is required for dry contact outputs. To set the blue auxiliary button to pulse an output, enter location P122E and activate option 4E. To set the time for this output to pulse, enter option P146E and then enter the time in seconds. By default, the pulse time is 20 seconds. To reprogram the red panic button as an auxiliary output button, enter location P121E and activate option 4E. Note that when this option is enabled, this will disable all panic features for radio keys. To set the pulse time for auxiliary one, enter location P145E and then enter a new time followed by E. Note that the red panic button requires a press and hold for one second to activate. This is built into the radio key and cannot be disabled. A single button panic key can be programmed into a zone instead of a user location, allowing individual output mapping for that particular key. This can be useful to disable siren outputs for duress or hold up alarms. There are several steps involved in enabling a radio key to be a silent duress button. To learn a radio key into a zone, select a free zone between P101E and P116E. Place the system into learn mode by pressing 1E on an LCD keypad or the program device button on a navigator keypad. Press the radio key button to learn. If the radio key is not learned by the system, you may need to disable the option P68E3E, which will disable the long encrypted radio message feature. Next, you'll need to disable the zone's hardwired input. This can be done by simply placing a resistor into the zone or deprogramming it by option P125E and then deselect the zone followed by E. Next, program the zone as a 24-hour zone by entering location P52E and then activate the zone followed by E. Disable the siren outputs for the zone in locations P54E through to P57E. You can selectively choose which siren outputs to enable or disable for the radio zone. Optionally, an auxiliary output could be enabled for the zone. This could be connected to an LED indicator which will latch for the siren runtime or until reset by a code. This could be used as a visual indicator that a duress has been triggered. To test a wireless duress zone in normal operation mode, trigger the button. The dialer will trigger if programmed and only the outputs that are selected will trigger. The keypad will display a flashing zone icon indicating a zone alarm. The keypad will not beep if the option P56E has been disabled for the zone. Enter a user code to acknowledge the alarm and clear the zone.